Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today, we're gonna to be covering how I passed the Salesforce App Builder exam from Salesforce. Before we get into the meat of the video, I've got a few items of housekeeping. One, there's gonna be timestamps down below so you can jump around, save this video for future reference about the exam so then you can jump around to the different pieces that you want to rewatch or gather resources from. Number two, I'm gonna try and link all resources down below and I'll try and list out if they are free or paid resources so then you can Go with the ones that fit in your budget and what you feel like you are ready to use and go for. Personally, I like using free first and then moving into paid resources. And finally, number three is that there is going to be a playlist down below of this series that I'm doing on my channel, which is how I passed all of my Salesforce exams. Currently, I have passed five. Check that out down below. Let's go ahead and jump into about the exam. Okay, so what is the App Builder exam? So this is a more entry level certification and how a lot of people have described it is that it is a bridge between the Salesforce admin side of Salesforce and then going into the Salesforce developer side. Personally, I thought this exam was really indicative of that where it had you determine the lines between using clicks versus code. It also helped you understand a lot of the basics of the data model and the security model. The Salesforce admin exam bounces around a lot between the different aspects of Salesforce. It goes from data model, security model, user management, all the different applications that you can use for the different aspects of Salesforce like sales or service or marketing. This exam's a lot more narrowly focused on building stuff. So it's going to be the data model, security model, um, analytics, management. Okay, so there's gonna be five sections. The first one's going to be Salesforce fundamentals at 23%, data modeling and management at 22%, business logic and process automation at 28%. This is going to be the biggest section. Um, user interface at 17% and then app deployment at 10%. So there's five sections where I think there's like seven or eight on the admin one. It's not so heavily focused on user management like Salesforce admin exam was, but rather on building stuff the different tools that you use to build stuff within Salesforce. And then where you draw the line between admin and developer. Again, you should probably know a good amount of process automation stuff. Currently, I don't know if the exam still covers workflow rules and process builder. They did when I took it, but it has been a number of years since I've taken this exam, but definitely know about flows and then maybe somewhat touch on the, the basics of what workflow rules and the process builder does. So then you can um, answer those questions correctly. Again, in going into the future, if you're watching this video two or three years out, they've probably updated the exam to just be about flows since they have retired the workflow rules and the process builders. Right, so moving into the next section, which is going to be my background when I took this exam, which I think is really helpful to understand the background of the person who was taking it. So then I can kind of gauge where I am personally and just my personal preference. So I'd been working on the platform for five years, first as a pool receptionist, and then working my way up to be an admin. I had been a full-time admin for six months. I'd worked as part-time for a little while, and that was at my first attempt when I took it and I had failed that first attempt by maybe two questions. Um, so that was really frustrating and I felt super discouraged. And then I took a year off from studying for the exam and I focused on my master's program while I was working as a part-time Salesforce admin for a startup company. Personally, I could have probably passed if I had studied for maybe two or three more weeks, really heavily focused on some really structured good resources and focused my studying more on the sections that I didn't understand and the topics that I really needed to understand a lot more in depth. So when I did eventually take this exam again, it had been over a full year later after I had been working for as a part-time admin for an additional year while also doing my accelerated master's program, which also kind of touched within some Salesforce aspects within that master's program. Okay, so what I used to study for this exam, um, again, these will all be linked down below. So for my first attempt, I'd really only studied one or two resources, which I think was not very good to only have those two resources. I was feeling pretty confident that I would pass, and obviously I did not pass that first attempt. I had a cheat sheet of notes from my work that they had provided, which I have since lost, of the different topics. And it wasn't necessarily like a cheat sheet of like question and answers, don't use dumps, they're against the terms of service, but it was more of a study guide of topics, their definitions and things that you should know and where they fit into each section. So I studied that before and I think that was the only resource that I used and I failed it. When I came back to a year later after finishing my master's program, I had decided that I was gonna take a much more structured approach to getting the certification. And so I had a few resources. I had a Udemy course that I didn't really mesh with the instructor too well. 
Um, it helped me understand some topics, but not all the topics that I needed. Yeah, we just didn't totally mesh well. And so it was really hard for me to understand and grasp certain concepts from this instructor, which is totally fine. A lot of people have passed using this instructor. I just didn't jive well with them. Another resource that I used was the Focus on Force Practice exams, which were extremely helpful. Personally, I really like using those resources because of a few things that Focus on Force does. So they will have you take the exam and then after each question, depending on the different settings that you use for your exam, they will give you um, the reason why you passed or why you failed, as well as a link to the documentation showing this is why you passed or this is why you failed this particular question, which I found really, really helpful because it helped me understand the individual topics a lot more, as well as at the end, I was able to see which sections I really needed to study more. I did take all five of those exams and those really really helped me pass. Another thing that I did was a lot of those individual topics that I did not answer well on. I really needed some other non-read to me source or non-documentation resources to help me really understand a lot of the different intricacies of these particular topics. So let's say master detail versus lookup relationship is a big thing on the exam. So I really needed to know the differences between these two things and when to use a master detail versus when to use a lookup relationship and what the different uh, the different limitations were on each one of those things and how to use those in conjunction with another to use junction objects all those different things so i looked up those individual topics either on google or on youtube to help me understand via video or blog posts or uh, visual aids, whatever was available to me to really understand those. And that really helped a lot. As well as I needed to know the difference between a report type and a report format. And that also really helped a lot. As well as the different types of report types and the different types of report formats. When to use one versus the other really helped. And then I was able to take it and then eventually pass with a much higher score. <laughs> I passed by a good margin by both experience as well as using those more structured resources rather than kind of bouncing around studying like I had been previously. All right, so now let's move on to the additional resources. So it has been a number of years since I have taken this exam and so there's been more resources released. I personally have a course that we will be updating very soon, hopefully very soon, to have better quality video um, as well as some other resources there. So keep an eye out for that. Personally, I wish that I would have utilized more of the trail mix that is specific to the certification because that can be very, very helpful. I like to use uh, Natural Reader, which is a Chrome extension that helps read the trail mix to you or really any PDF or web page to help you understand the documentation a lot more. Um, one strategy that really helped me when taking this exam is that Salesforce will give you maybe a question where there are multiple different options and multiple options might technically be correct. They're looking for the most simple answer to, to be correct. So if you are looking to automate a process, you might be able to do something with a flow that you can also do with coding, but the correct answer is going to be a flow because it is the most simple answer. It takes less resources, it is more declarative, um, and that's kind of what I mean by the most simple answer. Um, and then finally, to close out this video, I wanna talk more about my thoughts on the exam. Personally, I think that this exam, it is a prerequisite to some other certifications that you will get, namely the architecture certs, as well as maybe some of the developer certifications. I think that this exam is a little bit tough if you are new to the ecosystem, like I was when I took it, and I didn't have a great amount of experience when I first took it. I guess newer to the admin and developing side of Salesforce. But I definitely think that getting hands-on with this exam or getting hands-on within Salesforce and building out the different data models and security models will really help you to remember certain things when you're on the exam because you've done it before and you can go through in your mind and do this and know which answer is correct. This exam is going to be like the admin exam where it has the choose one out of four or two out of five or three out of five question answers and it is all multiple choice. Don't be afraid to fail this exam if you are newer to the Salesforce ecosystem because it, it bounces around a lot, more so than other exams, but less so than the admin exam, where the admin exam touches a lot of different aspects. App Builder still touches a lot of different aspects, but it goes more in depth to some. It is like the beginner developer certification and the beginner architect certification. And I think it really helps to prepare you for those certifications if you want to go forward with, with those career certifications or going into those career paths. I think that this certification really touches on the differences and kind of transitioning away from admin and it's a good transition into developer certifications. Do I think the certification is gonna get you a developer job? No. 
um, you definitely need to have some developer experience or have more developer certifications than just the app builder certification. I would classify this more as an admin certification than a developer certification, but I think this is a really good one if you want to work with developer teams to eventually move into a developer or architecture role. So those are kind of my thoughts. But with that, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a like, subscribe. You can connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll try to get back to you about this exam. Yeah, you can check out the courses on salesforceupskill.com and I'll catch you guys in the next one.